When it comes to creating a video game, I feel like the most important aspect of making them has to be their original soundtracks or their OSTs for short. Like yeah, the game can be awesome or awful, but it's that unique tune or note that separates the good and the bad from the gross and the ugly. This is just my opinion, but I feel like I can have the most fun playing the worst game imaginable as long as the soundtrack is good. And yes, I'm talking about you. But aside from that, a good OST can make a game memorable and nostalgic. For example, try comparing Super Mario 64 to Super Mario Galaxy. Both are Mario games from different eras, but you know which soundtrack goes to each game just because of how good they are. Then you got other masterpieces like the Persona series, the Halo series, Pokemon. I, there's no debate that these video games have really good OSTs. However, there has been many debates about a particular mascot and whether or not his soundtracks are good. I don't want to delay this any longer, so without further ado, let's talk about it. What's good EYT, it's your boy VoSSD and today we are going to be talking about whether or not Sonic the Hedgehog OSTs are good. Now before we get started, can we all agree that Crush 40 has some involvement in making the best Sonic tracks in existence? Oh, you're serious? <laughs> you serious? I mean, without iconic songs such as Live and Learn and me, Modern Sonic would have just been a regular hedgehog to me. Like, I truly believe that Crush 40 gave Sonic that exact amount of edginess and cringe that Sega wanted. That black hedgehog. What? But in all honesty, if you want to argue that Sonic has good or terrible music, you have to think on which version of Sonic you're talking about. Because classic Sonic OSTs are way different from modern Sonic OSTs. Like, I'm a Sonic fan, and in my opinion, all of classic Sonic OSTs are bangers. From Green Hill Zone to Studioopolis, classic Sonic never seemed to disappoint me when it comes to the music. Well, and again, it might be nostalgia. <laughs> I wish I could say the same for Modern Sonic, but I haven't really played the Modern Sonic games. Only ones I played were Sonic Generations, Sonic Frontiers, and... Wait, oh wait. This game is bad. But overall, the best I can say is that there are some decent Modern Sonic songs that I find to be way better than Live and Learn and... For example, I never cared for Modern Sonic OSTs until I listened to Endless Possibilities from Sonic Unleashed. Like, holy crap, this is so good. I see it, I see it, and now it's all within my reach. Like, oh my god. It felt like the artist was talking to my soul the first time I heard it. Like, take me out to dinner first, bro. And not only that, but Windmill Isle, Dragon Roll, the Pop Those, both day and night versions are so fucking good, bro. If I were to make a tier list of Sonic soundtracks, I would instantly put Sonic Unleashed as S tier. There is literally no debate. Unless... Dog, if you think Sonic OSTs are fucking terrible, but never listen to Sonic Frontiers, then what is wrong with you? Hey, like, come here, come here, real, real quick, real quick, come here, come here, come here. You hear it? You hear this? I don't know if you could hear it, but are you hearing this, my boy? Dude, just, oh my god. Every time I hear a single string instrument from this soundtrack, I turn into I'm Dante whenever he reacts to Apollo G song. But at the end of the day, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Whether you love Sonic's music or hate it, that is your decision and your decision alone. So just know that no matter what happens, Sonic Forces will forever be asked. 